What's up, folks? This is Dan from Discern, and these are my thoughts on the new album from Devin Shelton, Sensation. Devin Shelton is a singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist currently living in Champaign, Illinois. In terms of his musical history, he is most well-known for his role in the post-hardcore band Emery. He was a founding member from the beginning in 2001. Uh, he stayed with the group until 2011 when he parted ways not on bad terms, but to focus on other things in life, uh, his family being a major part. And actually, he didn't even leave the group for good as he joined them on tour about three years ago and he performed on their newest album, which came out last year. Over the years with Emery, Devin played just about every role possible, uh, drums, guitar, bass, and vocals, and having had a sampling of each piece of this music puzzle, it's no wonder that apart from the band, he's been writing and recording his own music. He released his debut album in 2013 called Life and Death, uh, an alternative rock album with a captivating narrative focused around a husband losing his wife to cancer, his painful journey in the aftermath, and his transformed understanding of God's grace. Just last week, Devin released his second full-length album uh, titled Sensation, he crowdfunded this album on Indiegogo, uh, where the backers actually got this album a month ago. But to the broader public, uh, this thing just released in partnership partnership actually with uh, his buddies from Emory uh, as part of Bad Christian. Musically, this album uh, has uh, some, some notable differences in style from Devin's first record, uh, and lyrically has some very obvious similarities to his first record. So first, musically, this album has a notable amount of R&B and soul influences, a departure from the typical alternative rock and indie rock sounds of his debut album. The first song, Sensation, uh, is a clear signal to what you can expect in the songs to follow. Uh, syncopated drum rhythms mixed with luscious grooves from the bass and keys, brittle slapback delay uh, from the rhythm guitar, softly sung crooning and a, a generous offering of falsetto harmonies from Devin's vocals. And his vocal style is actually sort of the defining flavor of the whole album. Through the track listing, there's, there's heavier tracks, more rock-oriented like Tide or Buried Alive, uh, electronic pop tracks with ballads like The World We Know, uh, or the aptly titled Dance Track, Dance Tonight, or more adventurous styles like the salsa-inspired I Just Wanna, uh, complete with a nimble little trumpet solo. And through these varying styles, his vocals stay in uh, this soft, high-tone, seemingly always-on-the-edge-of-falsetto style. In Devin's debut album, uh, there were times where he let loose and got a little edgier and grittier with his vocal delivery, but on this record, he seems to have narrowed his dynamic range, uh, never really letting things blow up too boldly. And speaking of dynamics and liveliness, this is the primary area where I think this album falls short. Uh, it's actually something I noticed on his first album uh, and was hoping it wouldn't be repeated here. It's quite hard for me to put my finger on it, but there, there generally seems to be some special something missing in the mixes that would fill up these tracks a little bit more and push them over the edge, you know, really make them stand out. Uh, the music just sounds overly lifeless and, and lacking in dynamic vibrance. The performances feel robotic and lacking in excitement or vitality. It just sounds like, again, something's missing. Uh, now, remember when I previously said that the first song, Sensation, is a clear signal to what you can expect in the songs to follow? Well, that's true musically as well, as the first thing you hear in this whole album is a very stale drum recording, fade in, panned, hard to the left. Uh, yes, the drums start to fill in more as the song progresses, but it always feels incomplete. Uh, it, it always feels like it hasn't faded in completely, or the EQ filter on the sound hasn't pulled back quite enough. Uh, the toms in this song sound unresponsive and flat. The cymbals are, are very straightforward and regimented, almost like a rigid performance. 
and the rim clicks in the bridge are absolutely mousy. Uh, the sound is just lacking in, in punch and presence. And it's not just the drums that I catch this vibe from. The guitar tone that kicks off uh, the songs Tied and Buried Alive uh, is boring and lifeless, uh, very flavorless. Uh, the guitar intro to Howl at the Moon is plagued by obnoxious guitar picking tinniness, uh, almost like they had a mic right up near the electric guitar. Thankfully, that guitar tone transforms uh, throughout the track and finishes the song with a, a nice, electrically static, fuzzed out solo. The electric piano on the songs In Your Pocket and A Perfect Life are, are in that uncanny valley where you know that it's not a real piano, uh, but it's certainly playing the role of a real piano. And because it's simply a MIDI track, it just lacks that real life quality of spatial audio, you know, sound waves recorded in space and time, uh, which makes recordings feel more tangible and lifelike. All in all, I think the songwriting and structural approach to these songs are fine. Uh, some of my favorite tracks are Sensation, Tide, The World We Know, and Dance Tonight, which generally feature catchy melodies, uh, engaging rhythms, and mostly strong performances. But they all sound like I'm just not seeing them in their best outfits. Uh, I feel like they could be bigger or bolder, more alive. Uh, and I don't know what's missing exactly. Like I said, it's that special something that's just not clicking in the mix. And maybe it's just not clicking with me because this album had production and engineering help from Matt Carter from Emory and Chad Gardner from King's Kaleidoscope, both two dudes who I really respect, so I really don't know why it sounds so pale. Uh, I mean, Emory's sound is usually pretty squashed and compressed, uh, so maybe that's part of it. It, it. That sound really wouldn't work too well with this style of music. Um, but too many parts just sound like they were recorded in a bedroom, which I know most of the album was from what I've read, but you don't want it to sound that way. You know, there's a width and a height to, uh, to the final mix that you want. You don't want it larger than life, richer and more vibrant than the original recordings. Uh, but that just didn't seem to happen very much here. And for an album with such R&B and, and soul characteristics, it's even more surprising. Uh, it, it made me think that the, the decision to head in that direction with more R&B and, and soul stylings really didn't play to Devin's strengths because these bumps in the road didn't stick out as much in his first album, although they were there a little bit. Uh, and it's partly because the silky smooth sheen of modern R&B is, is sort of a defining aspect of its present day sound. The flawlessly beautiful vocals, you know, helped immensely sometimes by post-production fixes, uh, the, the untamed raw emotion in the performances, the heart and soul of the music, that's what stands out in sort of modern day R&B. And, and these are all characteristics that I would not use to define this album. Uh, and that's a shame considering, you know, it looked like it was trying to head in that direction. But like I said, I think the songwriting and the general approach to each song is pretty solid. Uh, it's just the execution that leaves something to be desired. The final thing I do want to mention, a positive about this record, is the lyrics. Uh, like on Devin's debut album, the lyrics here are narrative-driven. Uh, the songs don't seem to be, like on that first album, in a continuous timeline from front to back. They seem to jump around within a broader story. Uh, and honestly, they may not even be about one single narrative. Uh, it's tough to tell for sure. A good amount of the songs seem to be about a man whose wife has left him, who has lost access to his children, and who's grappling with the repercussions of his destructive decisions and with the destructive reality of the world around him. On some songs, he seems to place blame for his circumstances right at his own feet, uh, and at other times, he seems to be blaming the woman who left him, sort of saying, you're the one who changed, you, you are the one who left me. Uh, but not all the songs are gloomy, uh, as he spends a handful of songs reflecting on the positives in this relationship, the, the deep emotional bond formed between the two, the remembrance of the good old days, uh, and even dreams of sort of what could have been. 
But even if these songs aren't unified in uh, by a single narrative uh, with consistent characters throughout the throughout the uh, the album, the lyrics are still pretty thematically unified. Uh, this album deals with emotions and feelings in a relationship, both positive and negative, and in varied forms and stages of that relationship. The title of this album, Sensation, speaks to the human feeling and, and sensing that comes with romantic relationships, uh, even as the R&B and soul vibe sort of reflects the physical senses are deeply involved in romance, but so are the emotional senses, the, the feelings of the heart. Uh, and the takeaway from this album seems to be both a warning, you know, that the relationships you hold deeply can be painfully destroyed by your own doing, by the doing of others, or by just God's sovereign will causing things to happen that you never would have expected. But this album also celebrates the enchanting connections and bonds that are formed in these relationships, uh, ties that affect you to the very core of your being, and when these ties work in harmony, the relationship flourishes and, and both people seem to bloom out of it. But when these ties function discordantly, they tear at the very foundation of the relationship and usually end up tearing up the people in the process. Overall, I, uh, I don't think this album is as good as his debut. I, I struggled to find an emotional tie to the music as I felt too jostled and, and bothered by this lackluster sound. But I did enjoy digging into the lyrics, uh, and I really appreciate Devin's lyrical thoughtfulness. He doesn't tend to rely on lyrical tropes and slogans and buzzwords, uh, which is refreshing and keeps you engaged in sort of actively listening. There are links down in the description box below this video to listen to this album for yourself. Uh, if you've listened to his debut album, uh, or if you're a fan of Emery, give this thing a listen for sure. Uh, I also put a link to Devin Shelton's Twitter in case you want to follow him over there, see what else he's up to. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching this album review. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. New album reviews just like this release every Friday. Subscribing is the best way to make sure you don't miss any new reviews. If you have a question or a comment for me uh, about this album, about my thoughts about this album, or about something else, you can comment below this video, you could tweet at me at discernreviews, or you could send me an email, discernreviews at gmail.com. Have you listened to this album from Devin Shelton? Uh, did you listen to his debut album back in 2013? Uh, what do you think about his venture into this sort of R&B and, and soul-inspired sound? Uh, do you think it worked? Do you think it didn't work? Uh, what do you think of the sound overall, the lyrics overall? Let me know what you're thinking, folks. Thanks again for being with me. I hope this helps. See you next week.